I have been captured by their nature, how they respond to all different people and how people respond to them and open people's hearts up. The whale has played a tremendous role in World War I. I, I really think they are a, a wonderful symbol of, of this country. My hope and my dream is that when I'm a grandmother, that the whaler breed is the most popular breed of hawks in Australia. Ed, the budding lead pony, has something in common with Sandy and Bluegum, future camp drafters. All three also share common ground with Digby, king of the kids, who's learning to become a corporate trainer. The link between these horses is their ancestry. They're whalers, direct descendants of the legendary mounts of the Australian light horse. And just five months ago, they were here wild in the Northern Territory. Pauline and Jess Liston are used to dealing in thoroughbreds through their family breeding business, Three Bridges. But this was their first encounter with a herd of old bloodline whalers. Red earth and blue skies and wild horses coming in to drink at this ball and it was a hot day and so many were just galloping into the water and playing and rearing up and horses living off not much food at all and thriving. I was so besotted by how resilient they are, and that's what I love about the breed. Just over 100 years ago, ancestors of these animals were living the same way, before they joined thousands of young Australians in battle during the First World War. Their efforts in the Middle East alone made an indelible mark in Australia's history. You're facing 4,000 Turks in trenches, nests of machine guns, artillery, and they just barrel through. And those horsemen and their horses go where no one sane would ever go. They were the dominant force in defeating the Turks in World War I. They've done so much for our country, and when I found out there's not many left in the world, I just had this strong desire or urge to do what I can to help that, the breed. And so the mission began to bring a group of whalers from the Northern Territory to Victoria to be rehomed. The ultimate goal? To spread the message about how loyal and versatile these whalers can be. We spent time going out to cattle yards, meeting different stockmen, meeting as many local people up there to get their ideas. We connected with all the right people, so everyone along the way had the right support and to help them have their best journey that they could. From the dusty red centre to the midwinter of central Victoria. That's what that is. <laughs> A painstaking 2,000 kilometres. No worry. After three days, plenty of phone calls and even more frayed nerves, the precious cargo finally completed its journey. We did it. We did it. <laughs> and while the trip had its challenges, the biggest was yet to come. Just a day after arriving, a spooked whaler ran at Pauline and she had nowhere to go. Got cleaned up in the cattle yards. I can't remember, or because I was knocked unconscious, or I didn't see it coming. But um, I got hit with a horse up against a tree. Three weeks in hospital, a week in rehab, and Still trying to get over it. Pauline's lucky to be alive. 11 broken ribs, four broken bones in her back and a punctured lung. But just a few months later, she's back at work and riding her old mate Jack. They're wild animals and they're just flight animals. So it wasn't intent, it just happened. But still a very big scare in what's been a massive project for this mother and daughter team. My mum made this happen. A lot of the times throughout the process, I doubted if it could happen, if we could pull it off, and she never doubted it. The whalers are now making a fresh start in their new homes. Justine Hales has Ed, who'll be a buddy for former racer Albert the Fat. He'll be a mate for horses here at the farm. Hopefully, be a good lead pony. Hopefully, he'll be able to tow the babies around and stuff in the round yard. Young Reuben Carl plans to compete with one of the two whalers that joined his family. 
camp drafting and uh, mustering, stock work. I could see myself doing that if I commit to it. I reckon it'll be pretty fun. We thought, well, let's have a crack at this and have a bit of fun and adventure with my, my young, young family and young horses. It's just time and trust. And once you get that trust, you've always got it. So Jesse's horses just come along in leaps and bounds and he's going to be a ripper. Digby will be part of Jess's horse coaching and leadership business in a rhythm, bringing clients to places like Lansmore Macedon Ranges. She's already made extraordinary breakthroughs using whalers to help big business leaders, sporting groups and school kids learn more about themselves through the lens of a horse's instincts. They've just got this really calm, really strong strength about them that helps helps people find their own inner strength, I feel. And the original whaler travelling party of 20 is now 21, after Mayor Lucy gave birth to little Percy. That genetic line from the 19th century on is being preserved by this action, and I think that's terrific. It's a thread that'll help people comprehend what an important part they played and we played in the Middle East War. They're really versatile, so I hope that people see that and instead of buying their kids a Welsh Mountain pony, they say, we need a whaler for our family. <laughs>